Stop what you are doing right now. Tonight, the day this podcast came out, February 15th, we are hosting a Minnesota Wild Cup Snake tonight at the game at 8.30. We want you all to come. So just go to our website, 10ktakesmn.com. Go to our events tab, and you'll be able to buy tickets. Let's build some history. Let's build a snake. Let's get on TNT, ladies and gentlemen. On this episode of It's a Bit, it's Valentine's Day. We're spending it with our pals here. You're going to hear what that word means, Valentine's Day, a little later. But uh, we also give our bits of the week, as always, including some stories from over the weekend at the Wild Game. And we end the show by ranking our top bars in the state of Minnesota. So all of that and more on It's a Bit. Welcome back to another episode of It's a Bit presented by 10,000 Takes. My name is Bossman, joined by producer Cam, journalist Jake, and Wags making a return back into the studio, not doing the, the Zoom shit this week. No, it feels uh, feels good to be back in person. You, you guys look great. Yeah. Oh, we yeah, haven't aged? Know, I mean, dude, Cam, thanks. you look like you just blew your nose, but other than that, you look great, dude. Yeah. What? Look, did, your or he nose snorted a line red, of, of some sort of illegal substance. Did you sneeze like four times this morning? I woke up to sneezing at I like did. 6 a.m. I did. Because <laughs> like we were just talking before the podcast, I'm just like waking up congested. Yeah. And then like I'm fine by like noon, but it doesn't make That's sense. That's the weather. I need a humidifier. One day, yeah, one sure. day it's like minus five and the next it's fucking raining. I mean, I, we, we open every one of these episodes by bitching about the weather and you're going to experience that until about may i'd say well so. dude, it's raining in february this is just, this is just weird yeah i don't like it i put on a raincoat today that was a weird vibe <laughs> in february yeah it's, it, it, february. It, it, it's valentine's day <laughs> i'm putting on a well, goddamn raincoat no wonder i'm singing nirvana today it feels like seattle mm-hmm. it's rainy and depressing i was gonna say that. and you were singing one of their most depressing songs literally earlier that, today that's too. Probably, <laughs> literally that's probably why i was actually subconsciously singing it is i actually it, haven't sang that song in forever is it depressing because it's raining or depressing because it's valentine's day and you're alone Am I alone? I'm with people right now. Mm-hmm. You know, what in I mean. terms of a relationship, <laughs> eh, I don't give a shit about that. Yeah. It's Seattle out there right now. Well, what don't like girls who are single? They get together and they call it Valentine's Day. Yeah, what, what should we call Parks and Rec? Uh, what should we call uh, this? Uh, just the guys hanging out together. Valentine. Valentine's. Um, Valentine's Day. We got balls. That just sounds, sounds like we're rubbing um, our balls all over the place. Valentine's. Yeah, it does sound like that. That We weird. whip them out. We compare. Let me Google this. Manentine. <laughs> what do you call a man's Valentine's? Yeah, yeah. Day? <laughs> look it up. It's gonna be a. Urban I'm afraid Urban I'm gonna get some uh, some different <laughs> answers. Uh, this could be bad. What do you call uh, it when it's just guys on Valentine's Day? <laughs> I don't think dudes. Horrible. I don't think dudes just hang out on Valentine's <laughs> no. Day like, like, like women do. Like uh, oh, go oh, here you go. Ready? Palantine. Oh, Palantine. Oh. What's up, pal? I kind of like ba- Ballantines more though. Yeah. But yeah, Palantine is a. Uh, that sounds like Palestine. Yeah, yeah. that's just, that's kind of what I thought it was at first. But yeah, uh, for your friends who will always be there on Valentine's Day if you're lonely. So. Aww. Aww. I'm not lonely. Aww. I'm just alone. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference, and it's okay. <laughs> oh. Oh no! Some Reddit threads. If oh you, no! If, if you, uh, don't go if down. You have, if you have dinner with your guy friend on Valentine's Day, he, pr- I'm, I'm going to answer your question and say he probably thinks it's more than just a a, a, a friend's dinner. Yeah, so more than just I, a pal. I wouldn't even go there. Yeah, if your friend is specifically saying, "Hey man, uh, you know tomorrow tomorrow's the 14th," I was thinking me and you go out for dinner. Well, you, should, you should question that. So no, no. So this is if if like you're a female and you're like, I'm just going to go out with my with my guy friend oh, on Valentine's no, Day. No, don't do that. You're gonna you're what? gonna you're gonna ruin his year. Yeah. yeah. If you're not <laughs> if you're not into him, don't go out like on a date with him. Oh. Yeah, a yeah, guy yeah. and a girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I totally heard that. Right We're now. past I, Palantine. I thought, I thought, no, no, no. I thought you were talking about like two bros, someone's girlfriend saying that she was going to go out with her best guy friend. Oh, now no, that no. I, th- I think that's just cheating. That'd be yeah. even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to go out with my boyfriend on Valentine's Day, but I'm going to I'm going to go out with my best guy friend. Yeah, that Josh is back in town. Yep. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna just gonna be a couple of drinks. A couple Nothing's drinks. Gonna happen. Maybe a bottle of wine. She comes back the next morning. <laughs> so, I got, honey, oh. how was your night? I got something to tell you. Uh oh. Mm. I'm in love with another man. Yep. Oh, all right. Well, happy Valentine's Day from everyone at 10,000 Takes. Uh, let's move into the bit of the week. Uh-oh. We'll start with you, Zane. You haven't, you haven't been around in a while, so we'll give you the, for, the floor for the first one. Yeah, and my bit is definitely going to be based on watching TV because I've just been stuck inside for weeks, I feel like, working. And mine's going to be the real mature bit, and this is definitely in reference to, uh, to the Super Bowl. I think it was at the end of the first half. 
Um, there was a play under review, and of course, Nick Sirianni um, is just in the middle of the play. He's pointing, like, 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 get back. He's essentially taunting the Chiefs, saying, "No, this is a first down. We have it." And fucking Jalen Hurts, his own quarterback, who's like 23, 24, has to grab his coach's arm and has to put it down. Like, no, we're not going to do that right now. That is crazy that a 24 year old quarterback is doing that to what a 40 plus year old head coach. Yeah, Sirianni's a child. See, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was the video on Twitter that I saw that was cut off, but it looked like he was flipping someone off. No. From what I saw, it, it, it was it was wrist it was wrist up that so got he, cut off. Okay, yeah, what it he, might have been then. What he did was he did the fourth down because they were on defense and they thought that they stopped him. Yeah, but they oh. actually didn't. Yeah, that, that's the funniest part of the whole thing. He's tiny, like no, like you're done, though. And then the play gets ruled in the fucking yeah. He was in wrong. the Chiefs' favor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, I'll, I'll get into Sirianni a little more. Actually, just one of my bits. I'll just read it now. Was the uh, the Shorzy bit. So Sirianni was seen crying during the national <laughs> anthem, which is if you've seen this, the, the spinoff of Letterkenny called Shorzy, he balls during the national anthem. So there's one of two reasons. A, Chris Stapleton did such a good job of performing our nation's national anthem that it made Sirianni cry tears of joy. Which or, is a very yep, good possibility. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or we'll take the conspiracy theory route and say, B, Sirianni thought about the script he was presented by the NFL the morning of that he was going <laughs> to lose the Super Bowl after being up by 10 at halftime. And uh, was just working just out his frustration, crying, just knowing that how this was going to end based on what the script <laughs> said. So you can take whichever angle you want. Or the but... script said that he needed to cry during the national. <laughs> just, just, yeah, just act true. like he actually gives a shit. Yeah. yeah. So who knows? Who yeah. knows? But yeah, that was just a. Yeah, Sirianni is just so much like he's, he acts younger than Hurts. Yeah, he does, right? And like he's this isn't the first time he's like done outbursts like this. I remember when he beat the Colts on like the last play of the game. Like he stood up and he like faced the crowd. Well, and he was he like, said, yeah. "That's he for that what, shit. that's for Frank Reich." That's for it's Frank like, Reich. Okay, yeah, but it. he deserved to get fired. Like, yes, he did. We weren't perform like the Colts weren't performing. What do you want? And he was just going nuts. Like you just beat the Colts. You beat the Colts. You should have beat them. Yeah. by more than what you did. And I'll remind people: the Colts beat the Chiefs, who are Super Bowl champs. So I think the Colts are better than the Super Bowl <laughs> champs. Like, like, Vikings beat the Colts. You got to hang. hang. Yeah. yeah, see. Oh wow, see, we're the <laughs> but, oh. but 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 the Giants beat the Vikings, so the Giants are therefore our Super Bowl champs. This could go on and on. Yeah, but we can think who beat the Giants now. The Eagles. Eagles. Oh, Damn God. Damn it. Damn it. And the Vikings beat the Giants. Yeah, you're right. The Vikings also beat the Giants. Okay. Well, earlier. so it's, it cancels out. Let's yeah. just say so we're back to the Vikings. Yeah, the, yeah. the Super Bowl is a draw. Yeah. <laughs> no a draw between won. all teams. Unless you go undefeated. I can't remember. Who, was it the Dolphins who did that yeah. one? Yeah. They went undefeated. Kind of fake, though. It was like yeah. 14. It was, yeah, it was way less games. Yeah. Well, they weren't as creative with the script back then. So no. True. Yeah. All right, Producer Cam, what's your bet? My bet is like, the random like luckiness bit because i i mean we all do like we all sports gamble every week but like lately like the past two weeks i don't know what the fuck is happening but like i'm hitting everything you're on one right now yeah and it's not even just sports betting it's like betting in general it started when we went to the wild game that night i hit an underdog and won like 500 bucks and then that weekend i hit pull tabs like the whole weekend and then I've just been consistently winning bets ever since. And then on the Super Bowl, I hit the fucking octopus. Yeah. That was the best bet yeah. I've ever hit. And we talked about it last week. If you don't know what an octopus is, it's where the same player scores a touchdown and then also scores the two-point conversion. Therefore, the player gets eight points in a, in a short yeah. span of plays. I got, okay. it at, I got it at plus 1,400. It was <laughs> fantastic. Crazy. If anyone was going to do it, Hurts. it was going to be Jalen Hurts. So that oh, worked I, out really well. When he scored the touchdown, I'm like, perfect. This is who I wanted. And as soon as he like did the option on the – uh, two point and kept him like I got it. There's no way he gets denied. And he almost got tackled on the one there. I was he scared. slipped out of that. Yeah. So I guess the real question is, Cam, do you think you can keep this rolling until the time we get to Vegas? I fucking that's, that's that's, a little over a month from now. That's so literally that, what I'm praying yeah, for. Yeah, because that, that would make the trip so much it'd better. Be unreal. I think yeah. March Madness is just too fucked up, though. There's no predicting what's going to happen in March Madness. I think we're all yeah. losers in March Madness. You never know, though. Maybe maybe times have changed. Probably not. Yeah, but maybe maybe you'll go you down. Never know. The, maybe well, you'll go down to the local cockfight. Maybe bet on on one of the chickens and you, yeah. you, you win some more money there. Well, we've we've been to I guess two March Mad like in Vegas. We've been to two March Madnesses, right? And has anyone really hit it big on a basketball bet? I hit it big on a UFC bet, but I don't remember anyone getting get anything big on a basketball. I came bet. close last. I year. I came very close. I think we've all parlays. came very close. Last year, I would have won like seven hundred dollars on a parlay if Memphis would have beat Gonzaga, and they were close. Yeah, but otherwise, I was like three for four on like four different parlays. 
And I shouldn't yeah, have so bet four times. I shouldn't have bet um, four games. Parlays it's, are dead. It's boring. I'm doing straight bets this year. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing parlays in Vegas this year. You're I'm changing doing, up your strategy. I'm doing yeah. straight bets, but I'm also going to take the four bets that I'm most confident of mm-hmm. in the first round. I'm parlay. And I'm going to parlay them 100 bucks. You, Jake, you know okay. what? You, you get like the most mad out of anyone I know when your parlay doesn't hit. <laughs> I know because I was so really damn frustrated. close. <laughs> well, I, get, I think I get really frustrated because none of my bets seem to hit. Although the last Jake week, I've been okay. Jake, you were horrible in Vegas. Last year. Remember when you almost jumped off the balcony at the Knights game? Yeah. <laughs> Someone of Florida the, Pan- the Panthers lost. I thought you were going to die. Yeah. The, the Knights were a lock that night. Oh, yeah. But I was also upset with other parlays. I was also paying attention to, I don't know what game it was, but I, I think I. I think I was like, nope, no more four game parlays. I'm going to just do a three game parlay. And then two of my three bets hit. I'm pretty it sure was it was like, like Washington didn't hit. I remember because I missed my flight. Donnie and I missed our flight over there, right? So then we get back and like you guys went to the hockey game and it was just you pissed off because you missed your parlays. I, mi- yeah. I missed a couple parlays, not just because of the Florida game, but like in general, like I kept missing parlays. My main goal for betting this year in Vegas is to not have my national champion lose in the weekend that we're there. Two years in a row, Illinois and then Kentucky. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Yeah, I've done that bit too. I, I think, Cam, you've been picking like a very obvious not champion not really i mean kentucky was a two seed it's not super obvious like usually people pick one seed yeah, well, well, yeah, how about but, we uh why don't we just pick like we come to a consensus who we think us four think is going to win the tournament and we just all put like a bunch of money on it together so that means we would all but, go down let's do it let's do it for content uh, on the show somehow we'll think of a way the week before we go to vegas to vet out a lot of our picks at least hundred dollars each yeah something that one person plays is it everyone has yeah. to throw some futures down though we gotta throw down some futures i yeah. did speaking of futures remember when i said i was gonna place put money on the kraken a while ago yeah i did it you did it how put, much you put on the kraken only like 10 bucks but it's like 2800 <laughs> all aboard the cra- all right. aboard the crack this wagon oh maybe what? it's more than 20 the I crack the crackheads is that oh. what they call themselves left like, hand up the crack, crack wagon no, like, everyone crack. get on the crack <laughs> cracks I, I just invented that term at I, least. Love it. I probably didn't invent it but i just thought of it oh, in my head you, got, you should definitely uh, hit up their social media person let them know hey get the hashtag crack wagon going well <laughs> we when we interviewed billy g in his office i was so close to telling him i think like he transitioned the conversation so i I lost my ability to do it but i was like man you know how good they would have been if they would have named that arena the crack house (laughs) i just wanted to see he would he would have just stared at me for like 10 seconds and been like did you did you graduate from high school (laughs) did you just say that to me (laughs) yeah Yeah. hey so yeah i I put ten dollars on the crack and plus 20 hundred so i went 280 fuck it you never know. It's they look bucks? good. They in the West is. They say the West is wide open. So that's what. Yeah. I, so I like. I've been wanting to do it for a while, and I was watching ESPN the, the other day, and someone was talking about the crack and like legitimately possibly winning the West. I'm like, fuck it, I'm doing it. Yeah. it's actually a possibility. So now. you have them winning the West, or the I have them winning cup? the cup. Okay, well, I will still never forget that stat line when they played the Blackhawks about a month ago, <laughs> when the Kraken were winning six one with five minutes left in the first period. They had seven shots on goal. Six of those were on Mrazek or. Er, Five of them were on Mrazek, and he didn't save any of them. And then they put in Staylock. He took on two shots and saved one of them. So they were down six goals with five minutes left in the third. I think the Blackhawks came back and lost eight to six, (laughs) but it was still the most incredible stat line I've seen 15 minutes in, almost as incredible as the amount of penalties the Wild committed in the first period of the game last week or uh, last Monday. That shot differential, 15 to three at one point. (laughs) What the fuck? They were just. I tweeted the picture from the 10K account or the GIF of two clowns fighting, and I'm like the Wild and Panthers trying not to commit penalties right now. Dude, so I, bad. I feel like the Wild are like the most streaky team in the league this year. Yeah. They they go on hot streaks and then they go on cold cold streaks. They just getting that extra point would have been huge the other day. Do you want me to be hot the one to cold. say it? They went to Mexico. They haven't come back the same team that <laughs> before they went there, man. I think that place changed them. <laughs> it's just Flurry like that. in Mexico. Uh, he I believe he did go on. A separate trip in yeah. Mexico. He's been awful. Zuccarello went to Florida. Mm-hmm. Hang on with Corral, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and then Gustafson stayed here. That's why, that's why he's, he's doing well. Fire. Credit to Gustafson for being the kind of guy who's like, oh, like I get a spring break, not going. Yeah. Well, it's just like Winter he used break. to sit at home and play video games. Who needs to go to Cabo when yeah. you got that, right? Yeah, yeah. come on. Also, Gustafson, big froth guy, according to Michael Russo. So that's a goal this summer is to play a little. Oh, he fro- was smoking pot. Play a little. Oh, this is no. I don't know that. <laughs> play a little froth with. Uh, well, if he did. With if, Gus you, Bus. if you play frisbee golf, it's it's a, it's also like it's, it's, it's synonymous with stoners, mm-hmm. right? Oh, you right. need yeah. to smoke yes. if you do it. Yeah. High association, yeah. high or, levels. Or you drink like those 
those silo cans of Corona, and you it's purposely silo. don't throw them in trash cans. You throw, you them, throw so- them on the ground. Yeah, yeah on the course. Boy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I used to work with a guy who's kind of a low life. He would go play disc golf every night and smoke weed and drink rumple mints, even in like ninety degree weather. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're drinking rumple mints. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's more of a lifestyle. Yeah, than the, the froth world. But I was gonna say you, you literally describe ninety percent of froth. You do. <laughs> Does he wear sweatpants all the time? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. There okay. You go. There we go. There baggy, go. baggy shirts. Nothing yeah. wrong with it. I, I mean, just think just of how I just is. think of Aiden Jake, dude. Let's go smoke weed, <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude. Let's go to the woods, dude. Let's go froth. If you just want to smoke, just let me. Just tell me. Just go outside yeah. and smoke weed. Yes, yeah. we don't have to. You don't, need to, yeah, this don't, you don't need to. It. You don't need to throw physical activity into it. True, dude. And like, have you ever like actually smoked and tried to do something? I've tried to smoke and play golf, and it's mm, it's never. not. It might be easier to throw a frisbee, but when you play golf, it it really like. Speaking of handicaps, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, dude. It, yeah, there's drinking only on the golf course is and the that, only way I can do it. And but, that can already yeah. fuck you up. Yeah. yeah. Big time. Well, see, drinking is good, though, because it helps you care a little bit less, though. So you're like, fuck it, and you grip it and rip it, yeah. and that normally makes you a better golfer, yeah. I feel When like. you're high, you're just she, looking through the sky wondering if there's aliens, and you're not even she, golfing. She, drinking on the golf course makes Jake throw clubs, even on a simulator. Yeah. We, 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 he threw we, a club. He did. Two weeks ago, he threw the fucking club at the screen. I will throw a club whether I'm sober or drunk. You threw it at a simulator yeah <laughs> the best the best Joe, line. Josie has been worse though this yeah. year the best line was Jack's buddy's like Jake uh, you didn't pick up your club he's like it fucking deserves to stay there <laughs> <laughs> oh it, it does oh I, yeah that's right I, I, I can't wait for the day where those simulators are so advanced that when you throw your club at it the club goes flying on the screen <laughs> It just simulates where th- where your club would go. I thought maybe a little splash into the water it measures the distance. <laughs> yeah. well, what, nice club throw. What's better though is I threw it, but uh, Josie when he got pissed this in the sim golf season, he would go up to the screen and just swing that golf club so fucking hard I could like hear oh, him breaking know. fucking light. Like he was just <laughs> breaking the reality. Like he was swinging so fucking or, hard. Or he just flip off the screen, and then the workers would walk by yeah. and laugh at him. And I'm like, "Yep, this is our group." <laughs> You're like Star Wars kid up there swinging that thing around. Yeah. All right, journalist Jake, what's your bit? All right, mine is the uh, Tin Man bit. Now, Cam, don't get mad. I don't know where this is going. Okay, <laughs> I've I've referenced this before. This is the Tin Man bit when we've gone out skating. <laughs> you need to bend your knees. Oh, dude, it's bad. <laughs> I'm not gonna get mad because I no, know. I know. Need to bend your knees, because when we were out there, into a coaching session. When we when we were out there a couple weeks ago at those very good Wyzetta kids, yeah, legs were straight. You're like, I'm tired. I was fucking exhausted. You're only gonna get better if you bend your legs and push through it. You literally look like your Tin Man out there walking on on skates. You need to bend the knees. You want a low center of gravity. Bend the knees. It's to the point where like Jake just randomly texted me saying, "Bend your knees." (laughs) Oh yeah, that was on Saturday. (laughs) Like out of nowhere. Bend Bend your knees. knees. What are you talking about? And and that probably sounded very weird. But then I added two hands on the stick. It actually still sounds kind of weird. Sounds weird too. But (laughs) you you gotta bend your knees. Those both sound like they could be interpreted as sexual tips. Yeah. Yeah. Like sure. Hashtag Palantine's episode. Jake's just telling me to get on. Maybe both. Do you want to look like Tin Man? During during doing the deed, no, you want to look. You want to bend your knees. You want to be. Power. A, you want to be in an athletic position. Yes, regardless whether you're playing hockey or, or you know, getting down to business. <laughs> you know, so you gotta you gotta bend your knees. But this goes to um, you know, this isn't even just go out to camp. Any person that's skating that hasn't skated a lot in their life, yeah, don't look like Tin Man out there. Thanks You've for- seen Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. Just no no bend. <laughs> Yeah, but the hey, knees, but the, walking. T- the Tin Man had a sheet metal cock. Yeah. He did, according to Bubbles. Thanks. Sure, thanks, Herb Brooks. Bend Who your knees. Who the fuck are you, <laughs> Tin Man? But just don't look like Tin Man. I get you trying to like Tin Man on the, uh, teach me because two we're ends friends, on the stick. But you giving a PSA to everyone listening. About sure, how to that's play why they hockey. tune in. <laughs> but but there are probably people. They're like, how can I get better at skating? Bend your knees. This is don't the look reason, like Tin Man. This is the reason people <laughs> tuned into the show is to get <laughs> valuable skating information. Yeah. But but it was just kind of it was just kind of funny, Cam, because you just out there, you look straight legs. Also, like 10 man. I was actually kind of scared because I'm like I'm a tall dude. I did go hard once at the kid, and I fucking <laughs> fell and almost ta- I tackled I him. I'm like I can't do this. Yeah, I'm gonna that, hurt him. That's right. And the kid got up quicker than you, and well, you're just yeah. laying on the ground. You're like I kind of like Cam. Are you good? I'm fucking hurt. So no. just for context, these kids were probably between the ages of like four and six. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. One kid was actually very. Fucking I, I was thinking of high school. <laughs> no, 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 no. So so we're no, it was like a parent with kids out there. We're we're playing a pickup game, and I was in net, and like one of the kids on a breakaway comes at me, and I like poked it out, and like under my breath, I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> just, just but stopped a child. On a, was good though. Just stopped a child on a breakaway. But I don't have control. So if I would have bent my knees and like skated hard, I actually would have killed him. Sure, <laughs> I, I can't do that. 
but you can still go out by yourself and bend the knees, and, and then you can go out and play Sounds with like the Sounds like when, when you run, you're not running straight leg. You're running run. with the knees bent. I'm saying when you when, do, in general. Cameron. I, in, in softball, when you're, when you're getting around the bases. It sounds yeah, like, you run in softball. It sounds like Jake's, Jake wants to go bend the knees with me. Sure. That's what yeah. I'm no, he wants but also to, put two hands on the stick, he please, wants, for the love of God. He wants, to, he wants to put two hands on your stick. He does. Sure, I want, I want you to bend your knees, Today's hockey and I want tip. to help you put two hands on your stick. On your stick or my stick? Both. <laughs> you play, can use if, my stick if you want. I can, I can demonstrate. Oh, my God. Just make sure you're using two hands. Just make sure you're using two hands, and they're not right next to each other. They're spread out. Oh, oh, oh yeah. It's not that big, Jake. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, he's using, oh. He's, yeah. Yeah, okay. Jesus my, my, Christ. My bower? Jack, your bit. No, um. Well, uh, <laughs> quick, quick honorable mention, tarp soft bit. Um, anytime you get excited about something in particular, we're at the New Jersey wild game on Saturday night, scored a shootout. I took off my shirt because it was funny. You did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's on a video. That's a game? It's in the video. Yeah. yeah. At, I, I when they scored it. in the shootout. I missed the video. But you could, you probably could have looked down and saw us. You're in that fucking suite of Yeah, I was, in, I was in the suite with yourself. work and all I hear is like just someone screaming my name. I'm like, who the fuck? I look down and it's Jake <laughs> and Jack. Yeah. Didn't even know you guys were going to the game. Oh yeah. And no, you happened it, to be right in front of It me. was a last minute decision after the YZ Chili Open. Yeah, we Dude. uh we decided to make a quick pivot to the plans and uh go to the game. Did you guys just see me up there? Like, like what the no, fuck? No, it was kind of funny cuz I just saw your snap story and oh, I was looking yeah. at the logo. I'm like, "Cam is like right behind us." And then Jack's like, "There he is right there." I can see him. I see the fucking shins of mullet. Yeah, and he's just yeah, he's just you're just staring out of the ice with your bottle of Bud Light. Also, huge shout out to Walzer, the company I work with. That was fantastic. I walked into the X and walked out of the X without spending a dollar. And I drank the whole well, time. Must be nice. It was great. That's, you, you, had, you, had, you had to save for the cup snake tomorrow. It was the best also, gift Also, you ever just received. announced who you work for, so now I you got to be careful. There's like 37 Walzer dealerships. Oh, if you find the one Cam works at, we'll give you a free shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> first, first person to come to my desk and kiss you at the dealership that I work at, <laughs> and mention 10K, you get a free shirt. Okay. Well, there you better you have one offhand, or else you're gonna be pulling off your shirt. He'll take out his phone. And he'll get the ad. Oh, no, if someone wants a shirt that bad, that's not gonna be worth the 37 oil changes to <laughs> <laughs> you pay for the free shirt. You get a probably, you get a free oil change. Probably just on look, me. On, look online, and I'm on there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'll close this out here. Speaking of the wild game, I have the program bit. So at wild games, you can pay five dollars for a random uh, <laughs> hockey program support well like so there's kids who are stationed around the x selling five dollar programs and uh you know the money goes to benefit youth hockey programs i'm usually really great at saying no because you know you've already spent a lot on the tickets you're about to spend a lot on beer you're about to go after um to the bars after the game and i almost like to think of it like the the scene of the movie airplane when all the like uh charities are coming up to him and he's like karate chopping all (laughs) of them and kicking them like when i'm walking throughout the x but one kid one kid knew who I was. He said, hey, boss, man, will you buy a program to support the Chisago Lakes hockey one way program? <laughs> yep. I stopped dead in my tracks. I turned around, and I gave him my money. No, we, we walked like, first. Remember, oh, we walked right. away. So we, walked we felt away. guilty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I originally said no, and then I'm like, God, that kid knew me by name. He supports the brand, clearly. You got to do it like, then. We, I, yeah, we were actually a ways away. And Almost at our seat. We turned around, and I'm like, I got to go get so that you, kid $5. So you found him, and you bought him. Yep. Awesome. It was like the old Mean Joe Green Coca-Cola commercial. Hey, kid. Mean Joe. Yeah. Well, Thanks, I'll, boss man. I'm really good at, at turning down charity, like like, like not nah, that's that sounds terrible. <laughs> it's but a like, great way, it's like but, the nice way to say I'm a dick. But like when you're at the grocery store and they're like, "Would you like to give an extra dollar to benefit no. this cause I've never heard of?" Like I'm usually good at saying no, but when you address me by name, that's the kill shot. True. That's where I'll the, give you, I'll give you everything. The one that sucks is like when they say, "Would you like to round up?" and then they just go off. Like, "Would you like to round up for uh, kids who have uh, divorced parents and have no shelter and have cancer?" Like uh, now, I have no choice because you just riddled four different. Yeah, things. now I'm just oh. now I'm just sad. I can't. Yeah. I came here for a loaf of bread, and yeah. now I want to cry. So you're not gonna right. donate? So fuck you. <laughs> oh, you're. A terrible but it's okay. Person. It's optional. But fuck you. Dude, I feel like I'd buy a lot more of those programs if it's cash only, isn't it? Yeah. yeah that, that's why I never get it. Yeah. It's cash only. But I mean, I I do like the idea of it. There's a different youth hockey program at every game. Yep. Yeah. And like I said, there's between you and your seats, there's probably 20 of those kids, and you feel just awful telling them no. But this time he said my name, and I'm like, yep, that's it. True. Game over. I do feel bad every time. Oh, a- like, every fuck. time. I-, I felt The only time I haven't felt bad is when Simley was there, because fucking Virgo Heights. <laughs> that was my high school rival. So <laughs> fuck them fuck kids. Those kids. Fuck those kids. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> fuck those kids. They got enough funding. <laughs> yeah. But well, I don't know what Sibley, but Edina does. If you can They're afford fine. it, and you know what? The, you, open up, you open up the program, there's good stuff in there. It's just sometimes, you know, it's an expensive day to pregame, go to the game, drink at the game, postgame. Take the Ubers, so you're like, I probably shouldn't spend the five bucks, but 
But if someone calls you out by name, I think by law you're forced to do it. So you got to buy it. Yeah. And it was Bob Kurtz night. He was on the cover. That's true. God true. bless him. That's true. I it, did. I, I did leave that program soaked in beer under the seat, unfortunately. But that was, five dollars went to the right place. That was a sick radio or whatever that they gave everyone yeah. who showed up. But did they do anything like prior to the game to honor Bob or? Yeah, what, what so happened? they they he was down on the ice, and they actually unveiled this like really cool. It was like a painting or poster of yeah. all the different places that he called. Mm-hmm. Like it was this really cool graphic thing in a frame, and Tom Reed was down there, and and he was cool. Even like the New Jersey players were tapping the sticks on the boards. Okay, it's awesome, a good yeah. good wholesome sports moment. Awesome, yeah. But yeah, legend Bob Kurtz. All right, well that does it for bit of the week. But we'll be right back after a quick commercial to rank our favorite bars in Minnesota. Sports bettors in Minnesota and beyond. Are you looking for a legal way to online sports bet in your state? We'll look no further than Better Edge. 10,000 takes and it's a bit are proud to be sponsored by the Better Edge app, which if you don't know what that is, it is a legal online social betting marketplace that allows you to post and engage with other sports betting fans. You can post all your picks, interact with other people, see what everyone's saying about the games coming up. You can place no commission positions in an online marketplace so they're not taking any fees. Typical sports books collect up to 4%. They're not taking any of that, giving all the money back to the better. You can compete in direct head-to-head challenges. You can send challenges to Wags, Journalist Jake, Producer Cam, myself. Not going to lie, if you send me a pick where you're betting against the Wild, you might just guilt me into it because I cannot I cannot bet for anyone else but the Wild. So I'll probably do it, do it out of pure fandom. Uh, you can compete in public or private betting competitions. Definitely be on the lookout for March Madness. They always do something awesome for that. And you can buy or sell positions like the spread, the over-under money line at current market prices. So if you want to get in on the Better Edge community, you can use promo code 10K at betteredge.com. You get a free 20 bucks when you sign up and verify your ID. Once again, to get started sports betting, you can go to B-E-T-T-O-R-E-D-G-E.com. Use promo code 10K at sign up, get 20 bucks, and start betting with us today. All right, welcome back to It's a Bit. Going to close out the show here with a very, what could be a controversial segment. We're going to rank our top three bars in the state of Minnesota. Also, I'm going to remind you that we're all in our mid-20s, so if you name some random bar in Northeast that closed in the 90s <laughs> and you're mad we didn't pick it, I'm sorry. I wasn't or, even conceived then. Or some yeah. bar in, like, Norwood, Young America or some shit. It's Never been town. there. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been through there. We're, yeah. we're, but I'm just talking, but there's a million, like, different small towns like that that we've all never been to. So. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's only so many bars you can go to at the age of 25. So um, just keep that in mind when listening to our picks. But let's start at number three. So we're drafting our first, second, and third favorite bars in Minnesota. Or sorry, ranking. Um, let's just go around the room. Journalist Jake, what is your third favorite bar in Minnesota? Yeah, I want to make it clear that this isn't a, like a list of like, I guess you could. But like I'm viewing this as just a place to just drink, not get really fucked up at. I feel like that's a... There's a difference. difference. Yeah, okay. that, that's blacked nice. out to me. I'm ranking it on like actual okay. experience, taking it in like that. I'm gonna go Doherty's in Prior Lake. Oh, gosh. Um, there's uh, an interesting crew, crew of people that go down there. You're, you're kind of feel like you're out of the cities away, but you're not too far away, so it's not that far of a drive. If people know, it's right near the Horse and Hunt Club, and it's it's a good spot, good vibe. I may or may not have seen people show up there, uh, getting out of their vehicle with like three or four. Uh, empty cans of a beverage falling out as they walk up to the bar out there. Uh, but it's a good spot. It's small, but uh, they got a good vibe in there and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Definitely like a country vibe for sure, but yeah. it's cool because you literally, it's five minutes away from like the cities. You yeah. Know? It's not far away at all, but you are it's like far. out like in, uh, in like, it feels like you're out in like farmland, you know, what literally I'm in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. So you feel like you're just having to do whatever the fuck you want out there. From what I remember too, it's not like an absolute dump. Like it's no. like every, like the tables and chairs are really new and nice. Like it's very newly renovated in mm-hmm. there. So it's not like your typical hole in the wall type bar in the country, Yeah, but it feels like it's small town vibe. Li- yeah. Middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's fun. Don't they, have, don't, they have wrestling events out back, right? Yeah, they've had uh, yeah. little people wrestling <laughs> events out there. Yeah, that's crazy. I, uh, yeah, and other things. and Probably just yeah. amateur wrestling. Yeah, probably all that stuff, you know. Yeah, it's crazy shit goes on. It's one of those bars, for sure. Kind of biker bar, but also spot where everybody just goes to and just has a good time and gets fucked up. Yeah. It's you know, not even the best of. bar in Prior Lake. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's well, why. You, that's didn't why you just he, say you've never well, been there. Well, I just know it's not. Technically, it's not a part of Prior Lake. It's now a part of uh, Credit River, mm. which used oh. to be a township, but now it's actually a city. So it's oh. part of Credit oh. River. But Cam, this is his number three pick. So I know. I'm just fucking with him. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Technically not priority. How do you how do you go from a township to a city? Is this population? Uh, that or literally applying with the state or something. Oh, okay. And de- s- developing a town hall. And... So their local government just finally got their shit together. Yeah. Okay. There's literally like I think requirements. To become a local government or some shit like that, yeah. Our studio used to be in Prior Lake. Pri- Prior Lake. Oh. By the way, I think I've said this before. Our name is still on the directory of the building. Yeah, still I hope it never leaves. Yeah, <laughs> no, you can't. Well, because it, because it's like it's a sticker on a piece of glass, and everyone knows how big of a pain in the ass it is to peel stickers. So the owners are like, eh. Yeah. No, they uh, the owners of the place where we used to work out of were not very attentive, and you can tell by the fact that we're still on listed on the direct directory. What two years later? Mm-hmm. Yep. Or we're just that big of legends, and they want us to be remembered forever. That's actually True. their selling point yeah. now, dude. 10,000 tanks used to yeah. be here, man. Jason Zucker was in this bill. <laughs> exactly. the same. We caused the most damage. We did cause probably the most damage of any tenant, but we paid our we paid our debts. Hey, we got our, com- our security deposit back completely. Yeah. I still can't believe it. I had that. to fill so many holes in that in the wall. I don't know how they You're gave us that You're by far the back. loudest, too. Dude, I still... Uh, it was like one of the first days we had the studio, and it was like 5 o'clock, and I'm pretty sure it was your birthday, Jack. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and we just put like these speakers in there, and you're like, no one's working here. Let's let's put let's put in the iPhone. Let's blast some music. So we start blasting music for like two minutes, and all of a sudden we just hear like a knock on our door. And this this worker was like, excuse me, I have clients right next door, and we were bumping that shit. Our yeah. room was like vibrating. Well, we were like oh, celebrating because we had just gotten the place, and yep. we we're like, what's it the, was your what, birthday? Yeah. What's the first thing you do when you move into a new house? You you plug in the speakers, you jam, and you just kind of dance in the in the emptiness. And yeah. you're like, yeah. this is mine now. Exactly. That's that's what we were doing. But uh, apparently someone was giving someone a very close and personal massage right next Acupunctures door. Acupunctures. Yeah. Shit. Let's just say that same person would always email the landlord like a child and never be able to talk to us like adults, even yeah. though she was twice our age. Yeah, all you have to do is, hey, up. this is what's going on. Can we change it? And we, we would be more than willing to talk. Yeah. Do you remember oh. the fucking house vent that went into our office? Yeah. Oh, that, yes. That made it so hot. Oh, and the God. window that would just fly off. Oh, we could go on forever. It was yeah. dangerous. Yeah. It's but, fun uh, to reminisce about that. Yeah. Let's go on. Um, we'll just go around in the circle. I'll go my number third. My number three bar in Minnesota. I got the Loon. You can pick your poison, Minneapolis, St. Paul. They're both pretty much the same type of vibe. Uh, I'm going to give my reasons of why I like it. The location, obviously a great pregame, postgame place for Vikings, Wolves, or Twins, or concerts in Minneapolis, whatever. Uh, The ownership is A1. You have Tim, who is the, I think he's, is he the general manager or owner? Can't remember. I think he's a flat out owner. Yeah. But you, you'd recognize him. He walks around usually in salmon colored shorts and he's got his white button down shirt. And the guy works like 100 hours a week. He's an absolute workhorse. Hard to but, miss. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he always hooks us up with free drinks when we're there or we'll get us a table. We sometimes we get to skip the line a little bit. I don't allegedly. know. Allegedly. It's, it's allegedly. It's all about who you know. Uh, the Grape Ape, a loon classic. It is, a, it is kind of a shot type thing uh, where there's like some lemonade, some purple flavoring. I do have a quick question. Yeah. I remember um, I love the loon as well. Uh, they have like a poster in there saying home of the grape ape, but mm-hmm. they didn't invent it, did they? Because I've been to other bars that they, have grape they apes. They do. Yeah, it's it, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I, I I thought I heard that they did start the grape ape, but it just other bars locally have caught on to doing okay. their own. Grape it could ape. be like a juicy Lucy situation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think that's how it is. I think they. I mean, I think we were talking to Tim. I think he said they started the grape ape. Yeah, like thirty years ago or something. Shout out. And but Cam he's, doesn't he's like not, it. Yeah. Well, it's, that's it. Depends on if you like grape or not. I have PTSD yeah. from the grape ape. Oh yeah, you literally died. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I and then I had one the home opener the twin the twins home opener last year and I actually it, almost died. It, it's one like, of those things where as soon as it touches your lips, it just. I've never had an alcohol like that until this. Yeah. It was awful. You were sitting there. You blew your wad from the two year party. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were. It's, uh, it's one of the best shots you can do. It tastes or it's like a burner at Bonzers if you're a Grand Forks listener. You were you were a mute cam. I, I know I know you're what happens to you and yeah. you like are when I'm like sick or overly really fucked up or something yeah, or just, not feeling it. you sit there and like you can talk to talk to you and you just stare at that yeah. person just um I also had the history so Tim has walked us through so many good stories of the famous people who have been in there such as Nick Swartz and Josh Dumal and he even had a story about uh the Blackhawks were in town for like a two-game series and like one of the players got like so drunk that he needed to get carried out of there the night before the game, and the next game he scored a hat trick. Oh! So t- Tim Tim has told us so many of these kind of stories of like athletes who roll in there the day before their game get completely hammered and then put on like an A plus performance. So um, that finally the TVs obviously a great viewing situation. There's TVs everywhere if you don't want to go down to the game but you want to be in the heat of the atmosphere. 
and uh, just good food. Mm-hmm. Just have great food at the Loon. So I had the Loon. Well, and for me too, it's like uh, just like you said earlier, it's all about location because they have one literally in Minneapolis and St. Paul. So no matter what event you go to in any of those cities, you're not going to be far away from the Loon. Yep. Yep. It's just yeah, it's a good good place run by good people, great staff, awesome establishment. Zane, you're number three. Um, I'm gonna go with Tom's Watch Bar. I've only been there twice, but the two times I've been there have been absolutely electric. Uh, TVs all over the place. So if you want to watch a game, any game, go there because I guarantee you they're gonna have it. Plus, on top of that, dude, half the TVs at the time were they had like Japanese television on of all these game shows, and it was <laughs> it was some of the most electric stuff I've mm-hmm. ever seen. But just all the TVs, and it's a huge place. It's it's like if NFL Sunday, Tom's Watch Bar is where you want to be, a hundred percent. They have all the packages, too. So they have, like, Sunday ticket. They have NBA League Pass, NHL Center Ice. When the Minnesota Wild play on ESPN Plus, you can actually watch it there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Super, yeah, super simple. Tom's is a great spot. And on top of that, um, the owners are awesome. We've interviewed KJ Osborne there. So they had lots of awesome stuff there. Yep. Cam, you're number three. My number three is also Tom's Watch Bar. Uh, It's, like, sports paradise. Like, if you're a sports fan, that's where you want to be. It'd probably be a little... It would probably be higher on my list if it was just a little bit of better location, but it is what it is. Like it's just, it's a great spot, and I mean Zane said everything that, you, that needs to be said. Yeah. All but, right, we're on to our number twos, Jake. Just need a sports book in there, and we're good to go. That, number that one. Be, I'm telling one. you, that would be that, so sick. That is one of the first places I promise you that we'll acquire a sports book if it becomes legal this yeah. year. Fingers crossed. Yeah. You know, uh, my number two. Just uh, like I have 17 of them. I'm trying to well, I listed out just to kind of visually see them and then try to rank them, but it's it's kind of tough. Uh, maybe number two's got to be Maynard's. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, the outdoor patio out yeah, there. I mean, I know we're not necessarily talking about, like, food. They do have good food, but, like, as, a, as far as just a drinking atmosphere, like that patio outside and everything, mm-hmm. even during the winter, because I was there for that U.S. Pond hockey thing on Saturday, and they had tents set up out there. It's a Big area, patio, right next to the lake. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Great bunch of areas. You're not just cooped up inside. There's bags literally attached to the ground, like bag stations and everything to play bags. And it's a great time out there. It's a, it's, yeah, it's super fun, especially during the summer. Yeah. And then just a huge patio. It's fucking perfect. I'm surprised you didn't say Wild Bills in Apple Valley. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I had thought about that. That bar made but, you, Jake. But like <laughs> three years ago, three or four, five years ago, that would have been in my top three. <laughs> what yeah, I'm saying this is definitely a current list, uh, but historical, historically, yeah, probably a top five bar for sure. Wild Bill's Apple Valley, but Fuck not now. Nice. They kicked me out. They kicked me out because I lightly tripped over a rug because I wasn't looking where I was going. Like, this guy's wasted. Get him out of here. Dumb. Wild Bill's. I was wasted, but I was able to control myself. I guarantee you there's people more wasted than you inside. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, what? Well, Wild Bills in Apple Valley, yeah. There were people 100 times more wasted than you were there. I mean, some of the bouncers were probably more wasted than you Correct. were. Correct, yeah. And some of them were just high, like, egotistical, like, oh, I'm a bouncer. Cool, you're not Secret Service for the president. Like, mm-hmm. stop. Yeah. Yeah. You're fucking Wild Bills bouncer. Yeah. Gross. Right. Uh, number two for me was Tom's Watch Bar. There we go. So... Uh, yeah, they have more TVs, um, than any bar you'll find. And by the way, they, I believe on their website, you can request a certain sport be shown on one of the TVs. So you can submit like a request. So like if there's a random ass college basketball game cam that you want to watch, you can just literally type it in. They'll find it on one of the TVs. And by the time you arrive, it'll be there. Um, great. I I think it's a fine location. It's really close to, you know, the bank, the bank to the, the target center. It'll be a good spot for the twins. I know. Yeah, there's a little bit of a homelessness issue close by, but you kind of see past that you know, a little yeah, bit. It becomes part of the bar. Yeah, it's part, it's part, it's part of the experience. It's part of the charm. Um, yeah. Events. So, like, they hosted the Vikings watch party with us. They gave out shots. We're doing this new series, kind of like the thing we do with KJ with them, where you can go in there, you know, talk to an athlete, get their signature. We're going to do kind of a live interview. Um, so they're really kind of new and hip when it comes to events. And uh, they have golf simulators. I'm surprised you guys didn't mention that part. That's a big seller for me. It's pretty rare that, you know, bars are able to afford golf simulators because sometimes a golf simulator costs what, like, a bar costs to purchase. So that's a pretty sweet addition. Incredible food. Mm-hmm. So the owner, Tom, who has, like, seven of these locations, sat us down and told us about all this research they put into everything on the menu, which I think just kind of enhances the whole experience. And uh, jumbo beers because – you know, when it's really busy and you don't want to have to wait to keep getting more pints, they're like, here's half a gallon of beer. Just work on this, and I'll be back in 20 minutes. Dude, I forgot to mention that 
bacon mac and cheese there. Yeah. Granted, it, it's expensive. I don't. It's the. It's worth it. I'm, it's very good. It's heaven. Yeah. It's the best thing I've ever had. Well, another thing too about the owner Tom, he's mm-hmm. fucking hilarious. I remember uh, we were all there before, or uh, yeah, before the Giants Vikings playoff games, and Giants fans essentially took the bar over. They were chanting Giant shit. Very very annoying. So in the middle of the Giant fans chanting their shit, Tom's like, I'm not gonna deal with this, and he put on on all of the TVs. Uh, Greg Joseph's game winning kick against the Giants a few mm-hmm. weeks earlier on Christmas yep. Eve. And that was absolutely hilarious. So shout yeah. out to Tom. Yeah, the ultimate troll. And uh, yeah, they have locations in DC, Vegas, LA. Like, you know, when it's a chain like that that's nationwide, they, they, got, they got a few things right. They're doing something right. Yeah. So I had to go with Tom's Watch Bar. Zane, you're number two. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'm doing what Jake did. I'm going with Maynard's. The docks mm-hmm. during the summer is, is absolutely lit, just mm-hmm. like Jake was saying. But I also want to say this. Um, only beautiful people are there. Like, like you know, like you go to fucking uh, Cowboy Jacks in Apple Valley, right? And you're like, oh, okay. What? Yeah. When you're walking around fucking Maynard's in there in the summer at like ten o'clock on a Friday night, every other person, guys and girls, could be a fucking supermodel I just know. walking right by you. It's unbelievable to see. And uh, I, you know, we live kind of close to it, and it's just. There's nothing better than drinking like right on the lake too. That's, that's something else that's really absolutely nice. awesome. Uh, for me, yeah, my caveat with Maynard's is like it has to be during the summer. I guess I've never I've never drank at the docks during the winter, but during the summer, it's one of the best yeah. places to be. Yeah. It yeah, was. They, they have TVs outside. Yeah. yeah, they have the big fireplaces. They have all the cor- cornhole boards. Yeah, mm-hmm. I always bags. forget about that because it's just the summer, so I wasn't even thinking about them for my list. Yeah, dude. So um, if you've ever been to Maynard's, between the bar area outside and the cornhole boards, there's these massive shrubs, right, to kind mm-hmm. of separate. The two areas and last year i remember i was playing and out of the corner of my eye i saw some guy pissing on him and he like turns around and like makes eye contact with me and both of his eyes are going in different directions he goes don't tell anyone bro <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like all right oh, you're you're good commander <laughs> good with me yeah. salute him but yeah another no. bias reason why i like maynard's i feel like every time we go there too people recognize us so that that's fun as well yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah the, be- the, the beautiful women's a big selling point um, and not not like we'd ever get any, but no, no. <laughs> yeah, just but uh, out of appreciation, it, it's a good spot. But no, it, it is. Uh, I mean, granted, it was like 30, 40 degrees on Saturday, but it was still fucking awesome there in the yeah. on Saturday. Like it was packed out there. They had, you know, they still had fireplaces going and everything and oh, bar of opened outside and sunny and on the lake ice during ice so it's great oh the goddamn waffle fries too oh with the sour cream <laughs> yeah. with the sour cream mm. so good just when i die fill my casket with the seasoned sour cream of maynard's and i'm just gonna have a great afterlife <laughs> that's, a, that's a legitimate request you guys better fulfill that if i die tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. sour cream we'll do. so good all right cam your number two my number two is uh trail stop tavern in egan okay uh, yeah i mean this is a personal <laughs> list <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure um I used to live in Egan. This is that's where I moved from when I like before I moved here, um, and I, I would go there every weekend with my dad. We just rip pull tabs, and it's just a good atmosphere. I'd go there after softball a lot. Jake and I went there after softball like once or twice, and it's great food and it's just local. So that's why I love Egan. Holds a special I, place. Any, anything in the South Metro has my heart. Other yeah. Than, other than Wild Bills because they kick me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Wild Greggs, but they're in, they're closed now. Fuck them. Fuck See them. Fuck them. And that guy who kicked me out, he's he's probably a security guard somewhere else kicking out dudes like way younger than him. This list was so hard toward uh, like, cause there's only one bar in like the cities that I just hate. So like I had to put a one that I used to live by in there. Yeah. I and, just, decide. and disclaimer, we didn't do five because we knew this would be a long enough episode. We could probably do 20 if it were really easy. Yeah, so yeah. just yeah. know that this, this made it difficult, but it was for timing purposes. Yeah. All right. Let's get into number ones. Jake, number one favorite bar in Minnesota. This is not life or death. It is life or death, damn it, because there's a lot of different fucking bars Shit, out there. I just remembered one I forgot. Ew. What? What are you doing? Do you want do you want other people to go before yeah. you and let you think about bad, it? Bad, bad, bad radio. Yeah, because I I have like three in my head. I have 67 of them written down. Okay. <laughs> just just Cowboy Jacks in Minneapolis. No, Jack, no. Yeah, Jack, you go. Blackout okay, bar, go to Jake at top five. I feel like... This was going to be a lock for all of us, so I'm kind of surprised he skipped so fast. I got to say, Tom Reed's hockey pub. That, that's mine um, as well. <laughs> that's in my. Is it yours, three. Cam, or not? Okay, so okay. that's fine. So Zane, I'm not we'll, gonna go with that we'll one cover now. this together. Uh, I'm just going to list my reasons. So two for ones during wild games. Yep. Great pregame and postgame spot. Obviously, the ownership, Tom Reed, North Stars legend, also mm-hmm. wild radio color guy. He does a great job. All the memorabilia. 
if you're a memorabilia nut like me, you could just walk in there and stare around and appreciate everything, including mm-hmm. a full set of North Star goalie pads hung on the wall, which is incredible. It's also in a way like a Minnesota Wild Museum. They literally have a picture yep. of every single team since the you know since they started in 2000. Yep, uh, tons of TVs. Yeah, which is obviously a big selling point for us. Um, this is a really low key one that I know no one else in the room will care about, but they have like a huge F one poster in there from Mick Schumacher's like or, uh, <laughs> Michael Schumacher, one of his world championships, and I'm like, that's kind of cool. Like I, I did not think this is a bar that would have F one stuff, but they cater to all sports. Fans. I will care soon. Yeah, you will. Yeah, I'm F1 trying. Guy coming. Um, finally, they have an outdoor patio as well. Great summer spot. Yeah. They turn it into kind of like a tent during the winter, like a heated tent for extra seating. And uh, finally, great food. Yeah, you know they have the poutine there. They and have, uh, everything is really good price, including they have like really cheap shots. So Jake and I know this firsthand. We went to what, what concert did we go to? Uh, Twenty One Pilots. <laughs> yeah, we went to a Twenty One yep. Pilots concert yep. one time, and uh, our buddy John just started buying shots. And he's like, "Oh, these are pretty cheap." And then I think Jake and I started buying them. Yep. And before you know it, yeah, you're, you're gonzo. The only thing that is a drawback from Tom Reed's is the fucking trough urinals. I don't oh, I, yeah. I don't want to see dicks when I piss. Let's just get some normal urinals. Let's put a wall in between. I mean, that's, that's they're fine, trying. Right? They're trying to hit your nostalgia bone from the Metrodome, <laughs> exactly. though. Exactly. Yeah, but it's just bringing up the PTSD I had as a five-year-old going up to the Metrodome troughs and looking but, to the right and left and, and seeing you're at dicks just the, at fucking face level. Yeah, your face level with <laughs> man meat. Yes. Does it make it a little better when they dump a bunch of ice in it, yeah. though? Yeah, you, that, try, you, you can try it to does, melt it. You can play it a game. Piss on ice. And they also yeah. like uh, soap, soap bars in there, too. Yep. So, yeah, I, I do appreciate the old school um of that well, the, the mini games in the urinal when you're drunk little, little how much le- ice can i burn little lemonade on the rocks jake, <laughs> jake, jake probably eats the mints that are in the urinal sure <laughs> they make yeah. your breath taste smell better yeah but um that's that. that's a good number note. one for us all yep. right cam you're number one uh so i love a good like most people when they look for a like their number one bar they want like all like the fancy shit i love a good dive bar so mine's Cuzzy's. That's a great yep. bar. See, yeah. so, was, so when I said, yeah. fuck, I forgot one, yep. I should have put Cuzzy's somewhere on there. It's my yeah. favorite bar right now by far. Yep. Like New, I love New Year's Eve is awesome. Yeah. yeah I love there. the atmosphere. I now own a Cuzzy's hat. That's how much I love it. And it, it provided one of the funniest stories of 10K history when Jake did the trifecta in the Cuzzy's <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> it's the greatest place Same ever. night we put a dollar that said 10K takes Hearts Better Edge on the disco ball. Yeah, which... you never know what you're going to get into there. Last year when we were there on New Year's Eve, there was this guy that was just scre- – he was a uh, – Georgia fan. And he was just like, go let's dogs. go dogs. And then I ended up and then I ended up splitting a pack of Marlboro Reds with him. It was yeah. great. Well, it was a fantastic He was drilling, night. but he was he was yeah. and it was funny because he would talk to you normal for a few seconds and you just turn him and be like, Go dogs. Like, go dogs and you just go <laughs> crazy again. He dude. like I remember the next day after that he texted me. You got his number? <laughs> yeah, because he I don't know how. Just picking up dude's numbers. He texts me, he's like, it's the year of the hammer fist. And hey. he sent me a like a meme of himself as Conor McGregor punching someone else as himself. <laughs> like hey, text himself. him right now and say, happy Palentines, bro. Should I? Yeah. Happy dogs. Palentines. And, and, and go, dogs. Say, say, go dogs. Go dogs. Also, uh, we've been mentioning like, how like a big plus of bars is having a patio. Cuzzy's does have a patio out back. It's, I've never been It's mainly it, just but... a slab of concrete with like plastic deck chairs, but I remember... I think it was after a gopher game this year. Someone gave me a Zen pouch out there, and, like, I never chew. I never smoke cigarettes, like, never vape. But I threw in one of those, and I remember just, like, staring at the Minneapolis skyline and just, like, waddling back and forth. I and literally, so those pa- they will get you high, those pouches. Yeah. <laughs> I never opened this. I texted him again after the, the after Georgia won the championship, and I just said, dogs. Oh. And he replies with <laughs> <laughs> Sickum. It's a selfie oh, he's wearing him. the Sickum shirt. And he's got he, a Miller Lite pounder in his hand. Does he not look like a cam guy? Like just a guy? Oh, yeah, he's a cam, cam guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, if he moves to Georgia and he needs someone to move with, you're like, I'm moving to fucking Georgia. Let's fucking Say go. happy Palentine's Day. And then followed up with, instead of like, do you watch NASCAR, who is your favorite NASCAR driver? Because <laughs> you already know. Because you already know he's a NASCAR guy. Oh, uh, that was hilarious. Out of nowhere, yeah, he, would just, he would just turn into a fucking dog, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't doubt it. There's yeah, there's just a bunch of characters that I end said, up at that bar. Said happy Palentine's Day. Go dogs. You're the hammer fist, baby. Go <laughs> dogs. <laughs> All right, no, Jake. That, have you thought of your number one? Well, yet? so it's between Reed's, Cuzzy's, and then Doc Cider. <laughs> so you gotta go with the one that hasn't been chosen yet. No. Uh, oh, the bar okay. at the Egan movie theater. Oh no. Oh, I'm just fuck yeah. <laughs> it is a great fucking bar though there, I found out. And there's fuck there's you can get a beer, a shit ton of beer. It's a cool bar, and you can go see a movie. No, I'll, I'll just go with Dockside then, I guess, uh, up in uh, Longville, Minnesota. It's the uh, old bar 
That is the up north small town bar where there are just absolute characters in there from this really big guy who is there all the fucking time. Literally is the guy who announced his last call um, and thought I was 40 years old once. Um, and that was when I was 21 <laughs> to the guy who they call old Willie, who is literally like Willie Nelson, who just screams at people in gibberish, another language. Um, and then just playing touch tunes, darts. It's a, it's a good old time up there in Longville, Minnesota. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say it, it, it's tough because some of the ones that I, I wanted to pick were just over the, the state lines, like, uh, the moose and Hudson, but yeah. that, it doesn't qualify. That's East, uh, that's East Metro. Yep. Yeah. yeah true. So maybe it yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but we'd have to expand the list though. Say like bonders right over the river. And yeah. Grand yeah. Forks, <laughs> that's you know? on the other side of the river. <laughs> I, the other river. I just realized that, uh, that guy probably thinks I'm hitting on him. I he know. Probably, I was, he, I was about to say. he probably thinks that it was like a typo and I meant to say Valentine's day. Just say bro. No, you well, have to, you, you can, you can screen shot the definition from urban dictionary that i read off big in, bro in the first segment should i follow it up with that no. or no maybe he thinks it's funny you know how funny it'd be if you just sent him happy valentine's first of all, day why the fuck do i care yeah dude. It's, <laughs> I like, it's not like you know him knowing now. this guy he'd be the guy to like think it's funny if you even sent him just happy valentine's day or send him, one, so send him one of the bitmojis where you're like dangling from the heart now find the most flamboyant sure. bitmoji you can and send it to him after yeah. that text. Yeah, like we're a just, heart we're emoji. We're not going to make this work. Just, just Cupid just emoji. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, do you guys have any other honorable mentions? I mean, yeah, Maynard's was on my list. Cuzzy's. Um, I'm trying to well, think. Well, of course, yeah. I have a shit ton written down. It was I already a, said the loon was on my honorable yeah. mentions. Uh Bunnies in St. Louis Park. Yeah, is, uh, I don't know, that's I a good spot. I have two of them. One is uh, Wildcats and Egan, just because I literally sure. used to walk up the street. I used to go there with Christian Laver all the time. Good buddy of mine yeah. to watch the draft. What, wait, what, what do you think of Caspers? I, Caspers is it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Caspers yeah, used to be all right. All right. <laughs> Egan, Egan has the best bars. Cooper's is good it's like too. Pull tab circuit. We would my me and my dad. We used to play pull tabs every weekend when I lived there. Thank God I moved. <laughs> but we would go. We would hit up Trail Stop. We would go to Fitz's, which is like the bowling alley, yep. alley where. Our Buddy lives by, yep. and we would go to Wildcats and then Yankee Tavern, nice. and just so, have a day. I think like five years ago, if I did this, like right when I turned like twenty one, it would probably be like Casper's Wild Bills and Apple Valley, mm-hmm. and God, what would it? Probably the Point in Prior Lake oh, or some shit. Like uh, Bogarts Entertainment Center. Oh in, yeah, in Apple Valley, it's a bowling alley technically, oh, but they yeah. have a massive bar area. Yeah, I, I lived across the street from there back when I was in an apartment, so we just literally walk and just get shit faced and bowl. Another another honorable mention one would be Buffalo House up in Duluth. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. They not anymore though. Like that's why I didn't put it on my list because it was a big softball. Yeah. Like, bar and they got rid of their fields and have just more camping now but it was a great atmosphere but i'd I say really i'd say surly's makes a mm-hmm. if you guys ever been to surly's brewing um awesome brewery they have good food there too super cool atmosphere bags all that stuff um good pizza so yeah surly's gets an honorable mention so There's so many. Park, truck park. Truck park. You got to yeah. give truck park. We're we're there. Truck park slash New Bohemia. New B- yeah. Yes. It's the same building. Right. Stubborn Herbs Pretty much at the U anywhere on West 7th. Eagle Street, definitely. Eagle missed, Street. Missed Stubb- yeah. Stubborn Herbs is, yeah. Stubborn Herbs is a good spot. I don't know. That's fine. It's older, but it's a good spot. It's probably better than Sally's. Yeah, uh, Stubborn Herbs when they do Lardy's like the, the parking lot party out back after a gopher game. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Uh, it's pretty dope. They serve cans of beer back there and you just... There's just a, a weird like mosh pit dance floor. Yeah, I I wish the bars were still open, but well, like up down in Uptown is still open, but like Uptown Tavern, like Cowboy Slims and Williams mm-hmm. Peanuts Bar, like were like the best bars to go to in Uptown before they. Did Uptown closed. used to be fun? Yes. Now it just sucks. Hey, you yeah. you're never probably able to experience it. Uh-oh. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun before COVID. We yeah. went there like all you the time. Fun before COVID. Bar, I'm like super jealous. I never got to experience. You guys might not know what it is, but I I like went there to eat growing up. But everyone that I lived in the same city moose country and like mendota oh yeah yeah people said that was the best bar so ever. i went there the last night it was open yeah i had just tur- i was only 21 for like two weeks it closed yeah. in like literally like may of 2017 yeah. or June, June, like i just turned 21 and i went there i was just my older brother and friends were out there so i went out there and they're like yeah this is the last night it's open and I'm like, that bar was fucking lit. Yeah, I heard it, it was great. It had like three levels, live music, fucking amazing live music. It was even fun and, as a kid. Like, Yeah. So I can't imagine. Amazing restaurant. Like poor House. Poor, I was about to say the Poor House. Poor House has honorable mention because we got VIP there back in the day and watched some shitty well, cover band. What about amazing. 12 Hour Days perform there Oh, yeah. Times. Uh, yes. Who? <laughs> <laughs> is there Lee's Liquor Lounge? Is there like a, I don't want to like shit on a company, but is there like a bar that you guys just can't stand? 
Wild Bill's in Apple Valley. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I, I got really not. sick of that place. <laughs> yeah, that's not a even lot of like, weird people. Yeah, there's the, it's, there's a weird crowd there, but like it's from going too much, in my opinion. Yeah, we yeah. went there. Yeah. I went there way too much. When we went I, there way too much. It's kind of the same for, for mine. When I first turned 21, I loved this place, but I'd never want to go there again. It's Cowboy Jacks in Minneapolis. Oh yeah, just another yeah. Cowboy Fuck Jacks. that place. Yeah, I think don't go there after 10:30 or 11 dealing no. with the line. But I notice it's fine when you go there in the summer. When the rooftop is open, before and a twins after, game, before a twins before game, a after twin, a twin, or a twins get there game. before yeah. the crowd, and you get yeah. a table, then it's fine. Yeah, because you have a server. Otherwise, if you're just walking in there with a the crowd, shoulder oh to shoulder, God. it's horrible. You have to pay. But for the line bar, but time. the barn area, but the barn area, like where they have the live music, is pretty cool too. Like if you get there early enough and don't do it, the line, you're fine. The funnest thing I ever did at that bar was play Golden Tea with Jack while we were blackout. That was, that was the most fun I've ever was had. Sick, and then we scooted around but, the city. Yeah, because we said fuck this place. Yeah, we almost got shot under a bridge. can't did almost die. I, I, would, I would I will say like another place you got to get too early is like the loop is fun but if you get there too late I, people say these bars suck because they get there at midnight and deal with the line if you get there early enough it's fun vibes in there like, I've never been to the loop it's fun yeah loop, we, uh, is, is like basement like, basement bar in the basement right across the street oh it's right yeah. across yeah. Okay. basement bar is another place but basement bar that gets crowded it gets basement bar is fun but the, when we were just there what was that last weekend or the weekend before yeah. it literally smelled like a shitty diaper yeah I know yeah. <laughs> someone it, it, kept it, it, that was I think well, it has since day one dude yeah it's it was, always smelled yeah. a little someone weird. was ripping yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a but it, it already does smell a little weird but it is a good like they can, they call it a dive bar because John Ham showed up there that's why they call it that Kind of. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> said, he said he said he when they interviewed him, he said he was only going to like two. He only went to two or three quote unquote dive bars before the game, and he, one of them was basement bar. He before literally a classic game. That was like yeah, one of the coolest moments of my life is we wrapped up our show because we did a live show kind of previewing the Blues Wild game, yep. right? And all of a sudden we get done and we just kind of look to the left and like John Hamm is watching our show. I'm well, so, I'm so fucking. We sad. didn't even know he was there yet because like he. It turns out he was watching our show, but we didn't know. It was after the show. We were someone at the bar. Him out. So we got and, done. We wrapped up. And yeah, someone Dev, we're out. like, we're like, is that John Ham? I'm like, that's not John Ham. Dev's like, that's John Ham. <laughs> I'm like, uh, is it? Oh, Goes up there and he just gives me a beer. I would have killed me, John <laughs> yeah, Ham. Fuck. Like, see, for, Dev just walked right up to him. Are you John Ham? <laughs> yeah, that's literally what he did. He's like, yeah, man, it what's made, up? Yeah, most people. If you know John Ham, he's from St. Louis, so it made it, yeah, it actually yeah. did make sense. Jack, you had COVID, didn't you? I had COVID and, and I was work. I was working. Yeah, See, that's I, like the one time of the year you can't do. I anything. also avoided minus thirty degree temperatures. That's oh, why I feel bad brutal. for you, but like me, I just didn't go because I didn't want to be in the cold. So I was just a bitch. And so I you just missed John out Hamm. on John Ham. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could have just. I mean, I didn't you go to went, the game. A, a, a lot <laughs> yeah, of people I, I just I went. Thought to, everyone was going. Yeah, yeah. No, a lot of people just went to the bar and left, or went to Cowboy Jacks after, or whatever. Well, I wouldn't go there. Well, I'm saying during the game. I mean, the game was an afternoon. Goes to some bar. No, I'm going to Cuzzy's. Sure. There was a fun event that happened after that game that changed our company. Yeah. <laughs> and internal information. <laughs> internal information only. There was some shit. That Listen. Oh. oh. Ja- I already know Jack Johansson's listening to this, almost crashing yeah. his car because yeah. he's laughing his ass. It's an inside yes, joke. And, oh, it's a big inside joke. All right. We well, that just about oh, does it for it, yeah. another episode of It's a Bit, folks. Thanks so much to, for listening and supporting us as always. Make sure to buy your tickets for the Cup Snake if you're listening to this on Wednesday. The game is tonight. Buy tickets on our website, 10ktakesmn.com slash events. Or if you're just going to the game, meet up with us. We'll send out some information today on where we're going to be building the snake. Make sure to follow us on all socials, 10K Takes. Read the blog, 10ktakesmn.com. And also there's a shop on there. We uh, we may or may not have accidentally ordered too many Zero Days Viking shirts, so we have a little bit of stock left for the Zero Days Since the Vikings Have Hurt Me shirts. So check those out. But Thanks as always, folks, for supporting us and listening to another episode of It's a Bit. We'll see you next week.